April here. Jason here. We are with April and Jason Photography. We're wedding photographers here in the Dallas area. And now our passion is to help you grow in your journey with photography. It is our passion is to help you make money and do what you love. And that's what Amen. we're doing. So let's go. But before <laughs> we do that, and I think so today we're going to talk about nailing the focus. Yes. Um, before we do that though, do you mind pausing this video, giving us a like, subscribing? We'd think that would be awesome if you would. And also register for our free class. We've got coming up a free class for you to nail your focus. We're going to go in depth about choosing your lighting and location and the exposure triangle. Yes, because there's a lot more to it than just nailing your focus. Yeah. Ayo, so if you don't mind doing that, we would appreciate it. So the first thing we're going to talk about in nailing the focus today is camera settings. Uh, most of these are actually going to be some camera settings, but the specific one we're going to talk about is how to set either one shot, your AI focus or AI servo. And the idea here is um, servo is pretty much our favorite. We live on servo. Yeah. That being said, if you're trying to get a very crisp image, you're going to start with one shot, right? And the idea there is you just click, click one time and it, it takes a picture. Um, but you you can't hold down your focus button. You have to literally go boop and then click, boop and then click. And every time you do that, it's taking one shot. And if your uh, subject is standing very still, then you're gonna get the clearest image possible, okay? So a good middle between one shot and servo is AI focus, which we pretty much never take. But the idea there is it's supposed to get an idea of what you're doing and then it's supposed to work that way. So you can one shot it and you can also, it'll also auto focus for you, mm -hmm. but not consistently like servo. Yeah. So the best part about servo is you can hold down the focus button and it, as your subject moves, your focus will change. It gets a little annoying sometimes, occasionally it gets out of focus that way, yeah. but for moving subjects, it's by far the best um, because of the fact that you're just holding down that focus button and it's going yeah. until it focuses and fires. And I remember in the beginning when we were shooting weddings, I was not aware of how fast bridesmaids walk down the aisle and groomsmen walk down the aisle. So having AI servo on has been such a game changer and being able to just like focus on their bellies and as they're walking towards you, I can click, 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 click and get as many images as possible that are very clear. So. Yeah, so you definitely wanna be using that. That's probably one of the biggest game changers when it comes to nailing focus. Yes. Um, before that, like she said, it was like a 50-50. You're like, click, and oh, click, click, and you're like, that was good, that was good. No, was good. <laughs> no. Yeah. and that's why you don't give, and so pro tip, by the way, don't ever give out the full gallery. If you're doing that, you're making a horrible mistake. Make sure you call those images, get the best ones, and share those with them. Yeah. But make sure you get those in focus, and that's why we're explaining all this to you today, because we've been there, we've made the same mistakes. Booyah, like and subscribe, thank you. <laughs> all right, the next way that we get clearer images is switching to a back button focus. And the reason why we do this is because when you are doing it simultaneously, the back of the camera is doing a different job than the front of the camera. Before this would go beep, beep and mm -hmm. beep, beep. So it'd be focusing and then the shutter and would firing. shut. Yeah. Firing at the same time. So we weren't getting as crisp of a picture as we are now by having the back button do it instead of the front button. And we just simultaneously press these buttons at the same time and we're getting a clear image. Yeah, the idea, because that's the factory way, by the way. The factory has it set to yes. this front bu button, focus, and fire. So it's you're going to get a much clearer image if first you hold down focus, fire, focus, fire. And then on AI servo, you're not even pressing this. You're just holding it down, fire, 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 because it's automatically it's focusing. Amazing. It is dope. <laughs> um, but yeah, you definitely, you're going to kind of constrict yourself if you're keeping the factory settings set on your camera. So don't do that, change yeah. it up. And how do we uh, get it out of there? April? Okay, so for us, we have an R6. So you would go on the back and we had to look it up ourselves because we forgot. But if you go to the orange menu, it's uh, the third page or yeah, screen there. And if you go down to customize buttons, that is how you set this up. And you actually can customize all these buttons. Mm -hmm. I have this one set up to be able to control when I wanna switch it to high speed mode when those bridesmaids are walking really fast, I can switch that to fire real fast and get a bunch of those um, images instead of just the one shot. 
So you can customize all these buttons, but I have this one set up. It's up to you which one you want to have set up, but I have the one closest to this um, viewfinder. Mm -hmm. so. And I think I have the next one as well, the little star one set up as well to focus. Just in case, yeah. Just in case mm -hmm. that one breaks for some dumb reason during a wedding. But yeah, the reason we didn't remember is because you said it once and then you pretty much don't have to go back and do it. So that's yeah. the best part about we it. We have well. had our back button set up for since we got the camera mm -hmm. and we will never go back. <laughs> <laughs> but a push. Right. All right. So <laughs> optimizing shutter speed for motion. April, lead us into that. Okay, so we actually just did a video all about camera settings. If you didn't see it, it was last week, but go ahead and watch that video or however this was, um, <clears throat> however this was sent up in <clears throat> yeah. YouTube. It might be next week's video. It may I not don't be even know what video. order we're in. Whoever but... posts it, whenever our VA posts it. Thank you, VA, for however you post it. Know yes. that this one can go in front or in back, it's fine. It's fine, either way. But we did a video all about camera settings and we went really in depth about shutter speed. But the way shutter speed comes into play is the higher the shutter speed goes, the crisp, the more crisp the image is. The mm -hmm. only thing is, the higher it goes, the darker your image is going to be. So if you're like us and you're trying to shoot bright and airy, mm -hmm. you're trying to get this correct in camera and shoot as bright as possible without overexposing, you're going to want to set your shutter speed to about a 250 to mm -hmm. a 500, depending on how busy your subject is. So if your subject is a toddler or like I said, the bridesmaids coming out to us super fast. They are like running down the aisle. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Slow down. <laughs> they do you that might want to have that shutter up to a 500 versus a 250 because they could be a little bit blurry. So since April mentioned it, a slight catch 22 for firing with the shutter speed or using the shutter speed at a 500 is if you are using a flash, um, then it's going to cut half of that. It's going to fire before the flash fully goes off. So make sure if you have a flash, 200 to 250 is where you use oh, because the shutter true. will fire yes. at the same time as the flash. If not, you're going to get weird. Half the image will be dark. Half the image will be light. It's odd. Anyways, done that. plenty of times. <laughs> uh, so, but another thing to consider aside from your shutter speed setting, say that five times fast, is the focal length of the lens essentially that you're using yes. and the depth of field. So the focal length, we touched on this on the previous slash future video, whichever this one falls on, that <laughs> one falls under, but is you want to double whatever the focal length is. They call it one over, so like one third over, but we always just double it to be yes. safe. So like the, if you're using a 50 millimeter, then you want to be shooting at a minimum of 100 at shutter speed, okay? And that's going to make sure you're getting the a crisp image. Um, now if your subject is running, yes. then you probably want to hit, hit it up to, to 500 even like it. Just know that it's going to start underexposing your image. It'll yes, get darker it'll as get you darker. go higher. That is correct. Mm -hmm. So another thing to consider is depth of field. And depth of field, the idea is that you're going to have a focal point and that is whatever subject you're focusing on, okay? This can get kind of difficult, so I'm going to try and explain it relatively easily. But you got this. you're going to cast the whenever, wherever your focal point is, let's say you got, you got three things here. Focal point, actually you got four things here. Eh, 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 eh. Now it's getting difficult. No oh my. So you got, because of the way the camera's cast, because of the way your focal focal point casts, you're gonna wanna have, if you're, if you're firing and there's four things, right? Because I got three right now. Mm -hmm. My hand is the focal point. Two thirds gets cast backwards. So optimally, anything behind the focal point, two thirds back, perfect in focus and one third forward, okay? So also perfect in focus if my hand is the focal point, right? Now, when he says focal point, that's where that little tiny box is when you're looking at a viewfinder, so, that's what it's focused on. That's what it's focused on, yeah, right. So hand. you wanna make sure your, 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 your focal point is focused on the right depth of field, okay? Mm -hmm. And the idea there is, if there's only three, since it casts two thirds back, we're gonna go ahead and shoot the thing in front, okay? That makes sense. So viewfinder focal point needs to be on that so that it casts two thirds back. Everything behind it will be crisp. A good example of this is when we shoot weddings, Jason really loves to shoot table shots. Um, it's really- Not do table shots, shoot. Do. He does like to do shots, but what? we don't allow that at weddings unless the groom insists and he's like, fine, I'll do it. And, and that's like, a very, do very, it. very, very Don't rare. do it. This okay, is a rabbit trail. She's giving my dirty secrets. Because he's going to start talking and you don't want Nobody like, wants too that. much talking in, at your wedding. Back to camera talking. stuff. Back to camera stuff. <laughs> if you're doing those table shots at the wedding and you are wanting to get every single person in that circular table yes. clear, 
a good way to do this, and Jason was saying it before, if you want to focus on maybe someone in the middle, know mm -hmm. that the people in front are going to be a little bit blurrier than yep. that person, but they're going to be clear. And the people behind them going through the circle are going to be clear. You could just have them also stand up and all stand very, very close to each other and then they'll all be clear. But that is one way of doing it is to kind of shoot in the middle of the table. That way the front a little bit is clear and then the back mm -hmm. is clear. So Yes. And if you're in a perfect scenario there, if you could figure it out and go, I'm shooting one third into the table, that's like the ideal scenario. But it is easier just to go like shoot in the middle and you're 50-50 as opposed to if you shoot the person in the very front, then the people in the very back are going to be blurry for sure. And if you want to play with shutter speed, I think that's a really great idea before going mm -hmm. into a professional setting, like, um, you know, doing professional pictures. If mm -hmm. you want to go play with like your fountain or your fountain, like you have a fountain in your house. I like fountain playing. <laughs> if you want to go like to a park where there's a fountain yes. or you can practice with the water from your faucet, ah, not fountain, faucet. Um, water fountain, you know. <laughs> but anyways, um, you can turn your shutter really, really low and see the difference in how that water's cap yes. being captured as far as um, the blur goes and then turn it up to see how crisp it is. And just because you said that, a lot of the times if you're looking at like a scenic photographer, they're the ones that are going ridiculously yes. low on the shutter speed. Yeah. And it's because that's what makes that water look like glass, one, or the waterfall look like a steady stream of water. Like there's no droplets. It's just this long, steady stream. And that the reason they're doing that, or the way they do that, is they turn tripod. the shutter speed way down. Yeah. But in order to do that, you gotta have a tripod, because if not, your hands will be shaking and you're gonna get a blurry image. I like how we both did that. <sighs> Anyways, last but not least, okay. there's some rabbit trailing. Definitely practice focus and recompose with different techniques. And the way you can do this is if you're trying to say, get somebody, like if you're doing a really cool composition where you want your couple or your subject clear on the far right and you want the rest blurry, um, you can do this by toggling over to the couple mm. and then if you want to switch up that composition, you can always move the camera over without having to refocus it and they're just going to still be in focus. And that's the beauty about shooting in manual yeah. is you can have all that to play with. It is very true. So make sure you're shooting in manual. So just to recap, what are ways we got? So Al your servo. settings, you got your servo. I like it called Al. <laughs> it's AI servo, but AI servo Al is really servo. the one we love um, or focus if you're this one shot focus. Um, other than that, back button focus, like customizing yes. your controls is solid there for sure. Um, and optimizing your shutter speed for the situation. Yeah. Um, and then considering the focal length of your lens, right? So you want to shoot double whatever the focal length is. Yes. So if it's 50 millimeter, go to 100. And then depth of field, which is, oh my gosh, you got really into the, into the blah, but just shoot one third in. So if you're shooting two people and they're on the same plane, don't worry about it. You're good to go. Just shoot at their eye. But if there are two people, shoot the person in front because it's gonna cast two thirds back. If there's three people, person in front, two thirds back. Four people, second person in the line because it's gonna cast one third forward, two thirds back. Yes. And last but not least, practice. Practice focus and... and recompose. <laughs> <laughs> no, but practice, focus, and recompose technique, right? We'll say yes, that. I hope this was helpful. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Comment below if you have any questions or feel free to come on Instagram at april.sap or follow us at aprilsapeducation and ask your questions there and I'll be happy to respond. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye.